And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Roll It. Uh, play it, roll it, win it. I didn't know much about this game. I saw it, it looked interesting. Had these cool looking balls here that are four-sided balls, essentially with the color, the four major colors on them. And it looked like an abstract strategy. Abstract strategy games always interest me, so I gave it a whirl. When I played it, I was like, oh, this is essentially four-player Othello, a game I played as a kid, you know, with the white and the black discs, and you're trying to connect them together. I played it quite a bit when I was a child, liked it a lot. Um, found that it was essentially a little bit solvable to some degree. So does four colors change it at all? Let's take a look. At the beginning of the game, you're going to put a ball of each color. Um, the, the balls show the different sides on all four um, here, no matter how many people are playing. So two to four players. And so on your turn, and you figure out who goes first by rolling one. Okay, so red goes first. So red is sitting on that side of the board, doesn't really matter. When you place one down, you must place it in such a way where you can capture another piece. So red has only a few options here. Red could place it here because between these red, they'll turn this one to red. Red could also place it here to turn that one to red, or red could place it here to turn that one to red. So let's say red does that. Now it's yellow's turn. Yellow can't do that. So if you are don't have one, you can just put one somewhere on the board. So maybe yellow puts it there. It just has to be adjacent to another one. Now it's green's turn. So green decides to go here and capture both of these. Then blue, not on the board anymore, so blue might go here. Red decides to go here. Red is going to capture this one and this one from green. And then yellow, once again, isn't on the board, so maybe yellow goes over here on this side. Blue decides to go here and capture all these. And then back to red again, who was winning, so maybe red decides to go here and just capture that one. And then yellow now has a nice line that they can do, turning all those to yellow, and so on and so forth. Once every spot is filled in the board, you simply count up who has the most colors showing, and that person wins. So in this case, and this is actually, this is after an actual four-player game of this, yellow is the winner because they have the most yellow faces facing upright. The components for the game, I like these. They're easy to spin, you know, they, they're literally a ball in a sense. And you have to make sure you spin them to the correct side, but it's not problematic at all. I was very impressed with these. You know, I also like the fact that you can roll one to start the game off. The board itself is more problematic. It actually doesn't fit in a box. It's two halves, and you have to slide these halves together. And it took me the longest time to figure out how to do it. I mean, the rules showed you, but it just, I was like, how do these ever fit together? And then one of my kids helped me, and we snapped it into place. And now, for the life of me, I'm really scared to try to unsnap it because if I do it wrong, I've looked at it. I mean, it shows you here they slide together, but I don't remember which way and how these pieces, and I'm afraid I'm going to break the board. So this has been together since I put it, but it doesn't fit back in the box, which is kind of a pain. I, I just thought that was kind of weird. Why not make the box this size or make the board? I don't know. That, but other than that, I like how the game looks and, and feels. Well, first of all, huzzah! Got them apart. Once I was done filming that, I decided to, I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to drag them one way and hope it's the right way, and thus it was. Although, if I was keeping this in my house, I would put these together and never take them apart. Just find a spot to put it somewhere. Now, I said at the beginning of this review that Othello was solvable to some degree. And in fact, in, in this, they actually color. So, on the rules, they color certain spots here. Let's see if we can see this. This shows you different possible moves, and they're showing you which spots are the best, the corners, etc. And yes, as a kid, we figured out pretty quickly, you get a corner in Othello, and that's the best spot. Why? Because it can never be taken from you. Spots on the side of the board are better than the spots in the middle. It's the same thing here. And I was really concerned in this game that there's a first player advantage, and I'm still not convinced that there isn't, because as you saw, one person can just be constantly knocked about by the other players. 
But in the game I just showed you there, Yellow got knocked out right away, but then came back and won the whole game. And so I don't think that that's a problem. Othello might be solved, and it might be solvable by computers, and I know the corners are the best and the sides are good, but not well enough that I can't enjoy the game. It's kind of like checkers in a sense. I know checkers is solved, but it's not solved by me. And so I played this with my kids and others, and I had a good time with it. And I think it scales well. You can play with two, three, four. And in fact, I tested it at all the different color, uh, th those player amounts, and it seemed to work well for each one. It's a simple game. At the end of the day, it's a lot of fun. I think four players keeps anyone, one person from doing the best because they're watching everybody. And I know it's not the deepest of abstract games, but sometimes I just want to play something that's fun and the fact that you get to flip over everything in between you is just a really satisfying feeling. Even if you don't win at the end of the game, you had some cool moves during the game. At some point, you were able to turn over a whole line, and I enjoy that part. So it's light, it's simple, and like I said, it's four-player Othello, but it's fun. That's roll it. And besides, it comes with these cool little balls that I'm trying to figure out how to use in something else. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you all next time. Dice Tower Judgment approved. <laughs>